Here in Sydney, Australia, we're out in the bush today. I thought we needed some nature in order to discuss this very important month that's coming up for us. Astrologically, this is an important month. It's famous for being a tough month ahead. And I have spoken quite a bit about the Mars Rahu Saturn Ketu situation that we've got going on in the sky. It's, it's big and we're not going to have anything like this for a while. I clicked up through the years and I had a look at what's sticky on the nodes in the future and I tell you we don't have anything quite like this for quite some time. So this month is special in many ways and I'm very conscious of the fact that you know when it comes to things like law of attraction that what we think about is what we create. And I am very conscious of the fact that this is a tough month. We're all saying it's a tough month. So are we all going to create a tough month? Is that what we're all gonna do? And, you know, on the one hand, I'm being realistic, I'm being authentic, I'm witnessing frustration and anger come up within me, I'm witnessing this around me, I am seeing this in the collective, I am seeing it, so there is authenticity, there is honesty, there is being real, there's you got to feel it to heal it, right? So this is going on, but at the same time we do have free will and we do have the ability to create positivity even in the most negative circumstances or situations or places or whatever it is right and that's what I want to focus this episode on I really want to focus this on hey let's be as positive as we can be so for each of the little mini readings that I've put together today I am going to focus in on Venus because we've got some good news there with Venus and I'm also going to focus in on the full moon because I think this full moon is going to be epic I think it's going to be major I think it's going to be a big crescendo of energy huge energy in the build up to that full moon and I'm hoping that full moon we can release and we can complete something really big in our lives and I think this is a month of um, potentially big healing for all of us we can really achieve some form of big healing where we come out of the month going god that was a tough month but i'm proud of myself and you know we want to be able to come out of this month saying i'm proud of myself i um i thought before i spoke i was real i honored my feelings even if they were bad or negative feelings i honored them in some way i felt them i allowed myself to feel you know um I think this is going to be possibly an amazing month and a month to remember. So we are in this beautiful location and I wanted to be here in nature because I've got, my, I've got two coats on because it is cold. Sydney, Australia does get cold. A lot of English people will turn up in the month of June and they'll have a suitcase full of shorts and t-shirts and realise, oh my god, it's too cold and they don't realize because they're looking at the weather in London and the weather report says Sydney 16 degrees and English people are being wow 16 degrees is warm and in London that is warm whereas in Sydney we're on the coast and it's absolutely freezing people don't realize that so it is cold here and yesterday I came here to check this place out as a place to record and I saw these ducks they were just waddling along over in that direction there and they were eating grass and I just I was just walking by and I had the camera I had my little tripod I thought Do you know what why don't I just film these ducks and I've never put um, animals in my video before have I for those regular viewers who've been watching me for a while you know that I never put I never put animals in the video and this one is going to start with those ducks and I'm going to edit that in at the start and I think there's some symbolism there for us because I, what I did yesterday was I did a Google search about what's the spiritual meaning of a duck 
And so this is kind of my little gift to all of you. The, the visual of the duck and this, because I think this holds a really good message for how we can handle this month. So it says here, duck symbolism. The spiritual meaning of the duck speaks the message, be in the now, be in the moment, for this is where all of your power exists and is available to you. The duck loves the gentle motion of slow moving water. Interesting. Drifting along meandering rivers and ponds. This is a powerful message to go with the flow where the waters take you naturally. Wow, and I thought where the waters take you naturally. How fascinating because from this I got a strong message of don't force anything. This is not the month to force anything right and you might be feeling some big energy you might be feeling and look for some of you it will be a good time to be courageous it will be a good time to step out and do things it will be a good time to speak um, and I covered that in the May episode so if you haven't seen the May um, rundown that's where I really talk about Mars Rahu and Saturn Ketu this time for the mini readings what I want to do is I want to talk about Venus and the moon because I'm trying to find some good positive news for all of you out there I was looking at this yesterday and I was thinking where's the good news I want to give you guys good news because I really do think we do have free will I really do think we can um, go beyond our circumstances I really think we can always create a better mindset create a better internal state I think we can always you know, um, rise above. I really do. And, you know, that's, that's what I'm going to be looking at today. So let's have a look at the overview notes. So those of you who've been watching for a while, you know that I always do a little match up of what's been going on astrologically and what's been happening here on earth. That hermetic principle as above, so below. Let's take a look. So we've got, I'm going to call this episode trade wars, I think. And, um, I've got a note here, you know, we've had Donald Trump resisting making a deal with China or making deals with China or he's, he's, he's um, you know, I, I see what's going on there and that, that's very interesting. Uh, he's got a state visit, so Trump will head to the UK, France and Ireland at the start of June to discuss trade deals. That's very interesting. Um, so yeah, I've got a note here, why am I calling this trade wars and why do I want this to be the focus of this overview? this introduction well basically Mars and Rahu are in Gemini and as we know that's trade PR communication sales um, I always tend to think sales I always think great sales guys have got a really good third house they're good talkers they're good you know it's air right and that's actually also I mean going back to the duck symbolism thing I was thinking about that because where's the water and we don't have a lot we've got air we've got fire We've got Earth with Venus there in um, Taurus. We've got, now we do have a bit of water. We've got Jupiter in Scorpio, but to me, that's not the flowing meandering water that this is talking about. That's the still waters run deep, you know, so deep that it's kind of scary. So, uh, but we don't have this kind of water here. And I was thinking, it's really interesting that these ducks were on my path yesterday and yeah, there's something in that duck thing. One of the things I was thinking is the ducks are eating. And I was thinking maybe a good remedy for this month is to go out and eat something absolutely delicious. Like, or make some delicious food for yourself. Or, um, who knows, maybe, I don't know, maybe people like eating duck. I don't know. <laughs> I know I don't. I, I, I've kind of given up meat. I, I don't eat much meat at all anymore. I used to eat meat, but... I don't eat meat now, uh, but maybe maybe that's a thing. Maybe if you like eating meat, and that's a sign for you. You got to go out and eat some meat. Um, but yeah, that this duck thing. I don't know. For me, it's gone back to the duck thing already. Look at that. I'm on a tangent already. It must be all that Mars and Rahu in an air sign. I'm just jumping around. Okay, so let's take a look. So why trade wars? Yes, there is something about trade here. It's happening in a big way in the collective, right? It's happening um, in politics, on the political scene in quite a big way. But what if you're a small business person? 
and yes this energy is totally active right now for small business providers let's say you started up a fruit stand you know down the road from someone who's had his fruit stand open for 10 years right and that, that person who's had it open for 10 years is going to look at you and say what are you doing here you know you might get some heat from competitors in your very got very interesting situation happening over there I don't know if you can hear that but there's someone shouting <laughs> to my left so um, that's a lot of fun that's appropriate yeah we're gonna have some of that I, we are gonna have some situations and as I say if you started a fruit stand down the road from someone who's been doing it a long time they might give you some heat you might get some messages you might get some some uh, little trade war situation going on there people saying get off my turf you know I don't want you here or whatever it is right like you know I've got some third wars going on up there it's all going on see this is I can feel it it's 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 full on okay clearly I'm being distracted very easily it's easy to do easy to distract me by the way I'm, I apologize for being late on this video as well I am very late I'm normally earlier um, I've had to delay and I've had to you know I've been a little bit run down um, so I'm gonna look after myself and um, I'm gonna practice what I preach this month so um, it is it is important to spend time in nature it is important to slow down it is important to look after yourself you know um, this is this is that kind of month okay the other tip I've got written down here is watch the aggression within you and I'm just gonna check the, I've got the other thing I wanted to say is I've got the screen flipped up for the first time so I'm just looking up at the screen this is a new tech thing I'm doing so you know I did the subtitles the other day I'm very proud of myself that worked out now I've got the screen up for the first time so I'm dealing with that as well okay notes watch look at me I'm distracted like you won't believe okay so this is a Gemini this is woo we're everywhere we're air we're everywhere um, watch the aggression within you right G grounding as well up in the air got to do some grounding I did that morning do walk check that out if you haven't already watched it um, watch the aggression within you watch your desire for revenge okay this is the internal work that we need to do. Forget about everybody else. Everybody else might be kicking off and going crazy. You go within, go within, have a look at what's going on within you. So watch your desire for revenge. Watch your desire to attack. Watch your ego wanting to show them, right? Really important. Watch these things come up within you and just observe and go, wow, okay, so I want to take revenge, uh-huh. And just be okay with it. These things are natural. These don't resist them. Don't think you're a bad person. Don't think that you're, you know, doing something wrong or um, just observe and relax. Relax into it and go, okay, wow, that's what's going on. Yeah, interesting, you know. Um, you don't have to embrace it. You don't have to like it or approve of it or you know although Louise Hay is a classic for you know I love and approve of myself I keep repeating that a hundred times each day and all that I love all that but um, I tend to think awareness is enough just being aware just going wow so that's me wow that's coming up wow okay and just being okay you know I think that's a very self-loving and healing thing to do being okay because uh, sometimes it can be a bit ambitious to love ourselves you know if you're at that place where you can love yourself, do it. That's the ultimate. Uh, I've got a note here. Put your head down and work, work, work. This is better. Yeah, I mean, look, if, if you've got all these things going on, the, the desire for revenge, the desire to attack, wanting wanting to show them, you know, you got to put your head down and just, just work, right? Invest yourself in work. Um, do something productive and, and do something for your future self, you know? So dates of note, we've got the 5th and 6th of June. We have the moon passing over Mars and Rahu are coming together. So those two are coming together. I'm just checking the light. We've got all this sunlight. I tell you, I'm just, I'm just going to carry on, guys. There's too much sunlight. doesn't matter. Um, 5th and 6th June, moon passing over Mars and Rahu coming together. So the moon passes over. Those two are coming together. The moon passes over. That could be interesting. 
What kind of interesting? Well, I'm not 100% sure. I'm, I put these together very, very quickly, but uh, let's have a look here. 11 to 16 June, I'm going to say, is, um, is going to be energetically interesting for all of us, right? So we've got Mars and Mercury will pass over Rahu. That's around 11 to 16 June. That entire movement is happening at that period. Uh, then we've got 17 to 19 June. We have Mars and Mercury conjunct. Now, I've called this the tough guy and the intelligent prince. And I was thinking, I wonder how I personalize this. Who can I use? I was thinking Arnold Schwarzenegger and Bill Gates. And I'm kind of going, oh. I was thinking about that this morning. I don't know. I mean, picture, picture some tough guy and picture an intelligent prince, right? It's a bad combination, you know, but the intelligent prince is in charge of the house, okay? He is the lord of the house. He is Gemini. So, I mean, within ourselves, you know, can we let logic lead? Can we let intelligence lead and rule over aggression? Uh, can we create that? And I think we can. So even though I've gotten written here, not a good combo, Maybe we can make it a good one, you know? All right, then we've got 17th. We have the full moon in Mula Nakshatra Sagittarius. I think this is gonna be epic. I think this is gonna be a really, really, really big full moon. I, I, I think the potential for healing something extraordinarily deep within us is there for every single one of us. And that's something that I'm gonna focus on in the little mini reports. We can complete on something deep and held for a long time. This has the power to be potentially very healing. And um, I'm actually kind of excited about it uh, because I, I've got a note here, something being dug up from your past will complete. And I'm experiencing it in my life. I can tell you astrology couldn't be more accurate. Just yesterday or the day before there was a dream that happened in my life and I observed, I opened up my software, I had a look at, because all this download of information just whoa, whoosh, this whole thing opened up for me. I opened up my software, I had a look. I got two major, major planets in my life. One of the biggest ones, Jupiter in retrograde, touching a very sensitive point on my chart to the exact degree clicked up to where the dream happened couldn't be more exact and I was like wow this stuff really if you're in tune with nature this stuff really works it's phenomenal so I'm seeing it in my life all the time so I, I really think the potential for big healing um, can happen here during this full moon so 17th full moon in Mula Nakshatra Sagittarius something being dug up from your past will complete you will be done with something deep and major from your past and um, congratulations if that's the case and treat yourself treat yourself be like the ducks go and eat some of the finest grass you can find <laughs> you know um, treat yourself and um, if, if you know you get through this period and you feel like because you see you're awake and aware you're watching something like this so you're on it you're on top of things and you you want to be informed and help others you know um, you've got amazing potential this month to achieve a lot spiritually so let's take a look at the micro I'm calling them micro reports this is not even a mini report guys this is like micro so I've just written a little bit about um, Taurus so Venus being in Taurus this is good news I know Jupiter is also not really particularly part of the big skirmish that's going on in the sky Jupiter's not really involved there I, I do know that um, Jupiter's in retrograde and I, I personally have had an experience now with Jupiter retrograde that I'm just like I'm not really liking Jupiter energy at the moment so um, my focus is going to be on Venus for all of you when I do these little mini micro reports I should say and we're also going to take a look at the full moon as well and I must apologize I'm just gonna have a little sniffle here and blame my nose because I am so sniffly sorry <laughs> I know that's really not nice to do on the camera but but this is winter in Australia and it's all about double coats and scarves and um, and sniffling that's what goes on here okay so let's take a look Aries moon 
Aries Moon, what have you got going on? I'm just going to read this out verbatim and um, we're going to go quite quickly. I think we've been saying 21 minutes. We're going to shuffle along because this will fall over at any point now. Okay. Venus in the second house, Taurus, is providing lovely energy. Yay. I'm so glad I have good news for you, Aries Moon. This is good. Um, if things are tough this month, treat yourself to a new purchase. Retail therapy is on the cards for you, absolutely. Uh, the full moon in your ninth house on the 17th will hopefully bring you to a conclusion about your beliefs on something deep in your past. Okay, so I, I wish that that is a very productive full moon for you and I wish that you are able to really complete and conclude something in your life um, that has been, you know, perhaps on your mind for a very long time. Kind of graduation time we've got to move forward from something you, you just might be able to do it this month so aries moon i wish you well with that taurus moon taurus moon welcome uh venus in first house taurus brings great energy so glad to give you this good news this is good this is a good time for a makeover ah. or starting a new gym routine it's time to feel good in your body okay could be a good time to tweak the diet as well uh, the full moon in your 8th house on the 17th will hopefully bring you to conclusion about some deep issue related to an old flame or a current lover or a family member in your partner's family. Okay, so I wish you well with this full moon. I really wish that it's a very productive full moon for you in terms of healing. I wish that you conquer something, you, you really leave something big behind that hasn't been serving you. The potential is there for that. So. Um, truly wish you well Taurus moon Gemini moon welcome thank you so much for joining so this is a micro report today really really small I'm just giving you a burst of good news in this tough month so Venus in 12th house Taurus wants to help you enjoy a romantic getaway even just a short weekend somewhere close by if you can the full moon in your seventh house on the 17th will hopefully bring some closure around a deeply held issue with your partner or at work and definitely with your partner you know this is something matters of the heart could be to do with your spouse if you're married and this could be something about your beliefs around marriage this could be um, something in connection with your partner you might be able to complete a really long-term deeply held issue Okay, so the potential for healing this month is really, really big. So I wish you well, Gemini Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you for joining. Today I have a micro report for you. It's really tiny. I just want to give you a burst of good news in what is going to be quite a tough month. So um, the good news I've been able to find is that Venus in 11th house Taurus will help you expand your network circle and bring in more opportunities or gains. The full moon in your sixth house on the 17th will hopefully bring some closure around competition at work or on a legal matter. Um, things should go in your favor. So this is a good full moon for you. And hopefully you're able to graduate to the next level in some way or complete on something really, really big. So I'm wishing you really well, Cancer Moon. Leo Moon. Leo Moon, I'm doing a very tiny micro report this time because in this tough month I just want to bring you know some form of good news I wanted to find some good news for you do you have some good news you have some news <laughs> how good is it I'm about to see uh, yes Venus in 10th house Taurus okay no, um, hmm. yes it may bring some challenges think twice before speaking especially at work with your partner and or parents but all of us Okay, are going to have an opportunity to release something really, really big and heal something really, really big this full moon. I think this full moon is going to be epic because there are big energies. So a lot is being stirred up and brought to the surface right now. So hopefully you can complete something really big um, that's been holding you back in life. So where is this happening for you? The full moon in your fifth house on the 17th will hopefully bring some closure around something you've been worried about deep down inside. And it could be something to do with your children if you have children um, something to do with your soul expression my god I mean you know if you're a person who doesn't speak up enough or if, if your Sun is not shining um, and you're you feel like you're hidden or you're invisible 
you know imagine that imagine you're able to to complete something around that or your beliefs around that in some way or you know um this could be really big for you leo moon and i've got the note here of advice breathe and let go okay so it, it's it's going to be a, a big month um let's use our free will to create as much positivity as we can in the smallest of moments right you can always get away you can always um i remember when i've been in tough situations you know i would just like hop in the shower and have a long hot shower and just let the water just take everything away it's little things like that sometimes that we need to rely upon during tough times so leo moon i wish you well Virgo Moon. Welcome Virgo Moon. Let's check out what's going for you. We've got a micro report today. I'm just trying to find a little burst of positivity to give you during this tough month. Uh, so we've got Venus in the ninth house Taurus. This is good. This brings luck, good health, the potential to travel to a sacred place. How wonderful. Um, go if it's easy, safe and within your means. Okay. So you might have other tough stuff going on. You might not be able to do any of this. I realize that. Uh, the full moon in your fourth house on the 17th will hopefully bring closure around something deeply held in relation to your home or your emotions or even your mother. Okay, so that could be absolutely epic. You've got the potential to heal something so big within you and to complete on something that has been holding you back. Okay, so start to contemplate what that is. Hopefully Saturn and Ketu are doing a good job of digging that up for you. Um, there's going to be a lot of stirring of energies, a lot of things being brought to the surface. Hopefully you can let go of something really major. You'll feel a lot freer after this month, I'm hoping. Virgo Moon. So my tip here is relax and let go. Really simple. Okay. So thank you, Virgo Moon. And we are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. I have a micro report for you today. I'm sorry, it's very small, uh, but this is what I've been able to do. I'm trying to find in the stars something positive to be able to share with each sign. And for you, we've got some good news. Um, Venus in 8th house Taurus will bring improvements to money and to your relationship as well. So this is good. Um, yeah, you know, other people's money, big money possibly, you know. Uh, the full moon in your third house on the 17th will hopefully bring you closer to a new and deeper level of courage um, which you can use in the future to create the life of your dreams and that could be really really big okay this full moon i think is going to be a really big full moon because i think we're all completing and healing something really really big because there's going to be a lot of energy stirred up for all of us and this is full moon is the one to work with in terms of healing something big and letting it go and hopefully you're going to feel a lot freer once this once this is done so libra moon i wish you well this month and scorpio moon scorpio moon welcome now i know it's been tough for you we've been talking about this and today this is a micro report i've only had time to put together this tiny little report um, you know, hopefully if I get time later in the month, I might be doing a, a Mars Rahu check-in, something like that. So, I, you know, there'll be more. Um, but you, I know you're in your Sadi Sati. I know. Let's see what's going on for you, okay? Venus in 7th house Taurus. So for everybody, I've just been looking at Venus and Moon because I'm trying to find positive news and good news for absolutely everybody. Now, yours is, you've got some nice news here. It's not too bad. Venus in 7th house Taurus may test you a bit at work. And it may test you in your love life as well. Be prepared to take time out in these areas. Um, there's a lovely yoga forming here with Venus in this position. So hopefully the tests are mild. Okay, so if it wasn't for that yoga, um, Venus in the seventh house, not, not ideal, but that yoga is there, so great. Uh, the full moon in your second house on the 17th will hopefully bring some deep level of closure on some matter in relation to your family of origin or your personal wealth. This could be a big full moon. And the potential here is for you to heal some pattern or dynamic in your life, especially in regards to your childhood, how you were raised. This could be stuff deep in your psyche, okay? You have the potential to heal that this month through this full moon. 
and I think if you believe you can because we've got beliefs here you know Sagittarius um, you will so believe it and create it okay so now is the time to really be putting all of our tools into practice and into use it's really really important so Scorpio Moon I'm gonna leave you with that I really do want to keep talking to you because I know you're going through a tough time but um, check back into the channel there'll be more content coming around around this time Sagittarius moon Sagittarius moon welcome uh, let's take a look at what I've got for you I've got a micro report sorry I'm just distracted by someone walking his dog um, I've got a micro report today because I just haven't had time to to put anything longer together and what I've been doing for everybody is I've been talking about Venus and the full moon because that's where the good news is this month. I'm trying to bring you good news. This is going to be a tough month. This is my way of finding some good news for you. So Venus in sixth house Taurus. Okay, this is not ideal, right? Um, it may test your health and competition at work may test you as well. So health and competition at work may be uh, being triggered and challenged right now. The full moon in your first house on the 17th will hopefully bring some kind of positive closure to a matter that's important to you in life in relation to health, love or wealth. This is very broad, but basically there's going to be a lot of energy being stirred up this month with all the activity that's going on in the sky. And you've got the potential with this full moon to really heal something big and major that's been holding you back for years. Okay, so and it is around beliefs because this is happening in um, in Sagittarius so it is around beliefs so if you believe that you can heal something major it's very likely to happen Sagittarius moon I wish you well and I'm gonna welcome Capricorn moon Capricorn moon welcome I am doing a very tiny micro report this time I just haven't had time to prepare anything bigger but what I've been doing for every single sign is I've been looking at Venus and Moon because that's where the good news is this month. We don't have much good news. So I'm trying to find what I can. Uh, Venus in fifth house Taurus for you. This is great. This brings great energy in relation to children and or romance. Full Moon in your 12th house on the 17th will hopefully bring some kind of closure to a health matter or even help you work out a way to bring down your expenses in some way. And I mean, look, this could be a very spiritual full moon for you. Um, so there's the practicalities of health and expenses up here, sure, but there's spirituality, there's all is one, there's, oh my God, what isn't there? So, I mean, you could, the potential to heal some pattern or dynamic in your life, maybe it's a relationship dynamic, maybe it's something to do with your heart, your love life, maybe it's, you know, your beliefs around relationships you know beliefs around that concept of all is one you know this could be deep so this full moon you've got the potential to heal something major and let it go okay so um god i wish you well with that you've, you've got potentially something very special here i wish you well capricorn moon aquarius moon welcome uh today i'm doing a very micro report absolutely tiny because i run out of time <laughs> and um I've been pretty busy. These energies have been uh, wearing me out, I can tell you. So now, what's I've been looking for good news for everybody. I've been looking at Venus and full moon for everyone because that's where the good news is. So uh, it is a tough month, so I'm trying to find some positivity. Now, for you, Venus in the fourth house, Taurus, brings great energy to your home life. Hooray, you've got some good news. Uh, married life or even your reputation at work. The full moon in your 11th house on the 17th will hopefully bring a positive closure to a project you've been working on, um, perhaps even recognition of some kind. So this is a really nice full moon for you, Aquarius moon. You've got a good thing going here. I'm liking this. And I think, well done you, you know, you need a bit of positivity. We all do at this time. And you've got some right here. So I'm going to crack on to Pisces moon. Pisces moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Apologies, today is a micro report. I've had no time uh, to do anything uh, lately. It's been too busy. Um, so what I've been doing for every single sign, I'm just gonna check the time, 14 minutes, we're okay. Um, what I've been doing for every sign is going through Venus and Moon because really that's where the good news is this month. There is not a lot of good news, okay? It's gonna be a tough month, we know that. So let's have a look. So Venus in third house Taurus brings a boost to your courage. Fantastic. Oh, good on you, Pisces Moon. You've got some good news here. 
some signs don't have good news. It's been hard. I've, I've worked hard to find some good news for everybody, but you've got some. Uh, and perhaps even support and encouragement from siblings and friends. Great. The full moon in your 10th house on the 17th will hopefully bring a positive closure to a project you've been working on um, or some deeply held matter regarding career. And Pisces moon, I just want to say that this is a really, really big full moon. It's going to be a lot of energy stirred up this month. It's going to be a lot going on and with all the stirring up of that, things will be brought to the surface. So at a full moon, that's when we complete on things. That's when we find closure. That's when the universe says to us, all right, you've done that. You've done enough of that. You don't need to do that anymore. So just imagine how big that could be in your life. You know, what this could mean. And it is in Sagittarius. It is to do with beliefs. And I'm saying to all the signs that if you believe you can achieve a big healing at this full moon, then you most certainly can. So guys, I'm going to leave it there. This month is big. This month is epic. Um, I'm going to try and do a little Mars Rahu check-in video uh, in, in the days coming up. So don't worry, I am going to keep talking about this very important configuration in the sky. I know I haven't touched on it too much today, but that's because I've done so many videos on it already. And I wanted to find something new and original to add this time around. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this report and please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, please give it a thumbs up or you know use the thumbs up and down buttons, whichever you like. And if you want to leave a comment, please do. I love reading your comments. And they really inspire me to keep going as well. So guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you next time.